Good morning, students. Uh, in seventh period, I'm having some technical difficulties, so this is a backup plan, just in case uh, I'm not available. So, um, if I'm not, then watch this video. It'll replace class today. And I'm going to encourage you to watch the entire video. There is a little bonus, a little something extra for people who watch the entire video and don't jump around. Okay. But obviously I can't control you because, you know, I would have done that a long time ago. So getting into the warm up, <clears throat> it's pretty simple. Uh, I want you to consider these uh, magnets for a second. These magnets on the left are weak magnets. This is a strong magnet. Um, and you're just going to go in considering that uh, and try to answer the questions about how uh, moving two different types of magnets, a weak magnet and a strong magnet against each other would react. And specifically think about our launcher and the, the spacecraft, right? So question number one is going to be when you push magnets together, what do you feel? What happens when you let go? And then you'll answer this question, uh, A, B, C, or D. Shouldn't take you too long. Activity two and three is really going to be a discussion where I'm going to do a couple of experiments, a couple of demonstrations for you um, to help you understand better what we're talking about. And that'll set you up for the homework. So we know that energy can be stored uh, as potential energy in a magnetic field. Okay, this is important information. And in last chapter, we took a look at uh, what happened on Wednesday, right? We had this huge jump. So obviously something different happened on the experiment on Wednesday where we got greater kinetic energy, which suggests that greater potential energy was stored. So the question for chapter three is why was there so much more potential energy in the launcher system Wednesday than on Tuesday? We're going to work through that all in chapter three. Today, we're going to specifically take a look at the effects of uh, potential energy stored in a magnetic field when a magnet is moved against a magnetic force. And specifically, we're going to compare weak magnetic forces with strong magnetic forces and see what happens. Now, one of the things, I mean, I like Amplify for a lot of reasons, but one of the things I don't like about Amplify is it often takes really simple concepts and makes them a little bit more complicated than they need to be. An example of that is when we look at our two possible claims here, if you read them, it's really easy uh, to be confused, right? Claim A says more potential energy can be stored by moving against the magnetic force of a stronger magnet. Claim B says more potential energy can be stored by moving against the magnetic force that's closer to a magnet. And really, my job as a teacher is to take things that sound complicated and make them simple. So let me do that. So claim A is just saying, hey, when we're trying to get as much potential energy as we can, is it the strength of the magnet that matters? Or in claim B, is it the distance between the magnets that matter? Now, obviously, both of those things matter. Let me give you a little thought experiment here. So when it comes to sticking things, using a magnet, sticking things on the refrigerator, right? Does the strength of the magnet matter? Well, of course it does. If you have a very weak magnet and you have a real thick stack of papers that you wanna put on there, that you're gonna put the weak magnet on there and there's gonna fall down, right? The strength of the magnet obviously matters when it comes to uh, holding things up, that potential energy. But it also matters how far away it is. I could have a really, really strong magnet from three feet across from my refrigerator. Is it going to hold papers up? Well, no, right? It's too far away to have an impact. There's, there's, you know, in for most magnets, three feet is not enough to have any sizable influence. And so uh, distance also matters when we look at potential energy. The question isn't, does it matter at all? The question is, which one gives me the best bang for my buck? Which one gives me the, the greatest investment or uh, return on my investment? So remember, we're trying to launch a vehicle in space. We have to 
uh, figure out what makes more sense, stronger magnets or shorter distance. So we'll take a look at that uh, today. This is what that looks like graphically, right? Claim A shows their same distance, but two different types of magnets. Claim B shows the same magnet, but they have different distances in between. So I'm going to do a, a demonstration. Some might call it an experiment where uh, we will clearly be able to see the answer to this. But before I do that, just some kind of basic rules about how we do experiments in science, right? First of all, in science, just because somebody says that this is the way it goes, uh, that's not good enough. That's not what we go off of. So even when I say, well, this is the answer, a good science student would say, Mr. Kirk, I respect you and I'm sure you're right, but show me the evidence. And evidence usually comes about as a result of experiments. So when I wanna do an experiment, I wanna only change one variable. I wanna keep everything else the same. So I know that whatever end results come about, they are because I changed just this one thing. I can attribute that or I can give credit to that, to just that one thing. So we'll do a, an example here, um, a bouncy ball. And I wanna see, uh, I wanna measure the potential energy that gets captured in a bouncy ball. And there's a bunch of different ways that I could measure this, but I'm gonna choose to, to measure this by dropping it from different heights, okay? Now, the only variable I'm gonna change is the height by which I drop it, okay? I'm not gonna do one height, and then when I set to do a different height, change the type of ball. Or do one experiment when it's warm outside, do the other experiment when it's freezing outside. I'm gonna to try to keep everything else the same, or what we would say constant, and only change the one variable, which would be the height. So um, I, I did this experiment. I had someone uh, take a picture of me. This is what I look like when I'm doing science experiments, okay? Um, I grow out my hair, which is all curly. I put on my special glasses that don't have rims, uh, uh, rims over the ears. I tan up real good and I dress in all white. I got those special white shoes, right? <clears throat> this is what I look like when I do experiments and I dropped one from waist height and then I took that same ball and I dropped it <clears throat> from shoulder height, okay? This is what, uh, this is what that looked like. Uh, I bent down, excited to do this experiment. I stood up, I dropped the ball from shoulder height and then I caught it and I measured how high it bounced, all right? And then uh, I said, hey, I'm gonna do this again. I'm gonna grab that ball. Uh, but this time I'm gonna drop it from my shoulders, okay? Notice I kept everything constant, even the way I dressed, even my facial expression was constant, right? Everything else is the same and I drop it and I measure the potential energy by how high up the ball bounced, okay? And obviously the higher the ball bounced back, the greater the potential energy that was stored. We're gonna take that same concept but we're gonna take that over uh, to an experiment here. So I'm gonna kind of slide over and I'll put this screen up. And we have the two different types of magnets. So we have our ruler, and since this is science class, we're gonna use uh, the millimeters and centimeters here. We have our weak magnets and we have our strong magnets. And real simple experiment. I am going to, <coughs> ah, I'm gonna measure, stop. When I say strong magnet, we mean very strong magnet. So I'm going to push these together. The distance between is gonna be zero. There's no distance between, okay? I could choose any distance I want. I could do this experiment at one centimeter if I wanted to, but I'm not. I'm gonna do this with nothing and I'm just gonna let them go and I'm gonna see how far apart we got. That was about eight and a half. That was really good. Now I'm back down to five. Four and a half. Almost five. I've noticed it makes a difference when you make a noise, so. About five and a half. 
five again. I don't know why the, vo the noise makes a difference, but it certainly does. Seems to be turning on me here. I'll do this one more time. Whee! All right, that moved it, but that was a little over five. So if we were doing this in class, um, you would measure these up, you'd add them up and uh, take the average. And now we're gonna try the strong magnets and we're gonna see what happens. Now, what do you think happens? You guys have played with magnets before. What do you think is gonna happen? See, look at that, almost over 14. Oops. Ta -da! 11. Ta -da! A little over 10. Didn't do a very great job. Okay, so <clears throat> on this experiment, we'll still have to investigate why the noise seems to make a difference, but what had a bigger impact? The strong magnet or the weak magnet? Remember the distance was kept the same. Yeah, the strong magnet had a bigger impact. So what, are, what do we know? Well, we know that, we watched that experiment. <clears throat> we know, let me kind of, Go over here that the stronger the magnetic force the greater the potential energy that's trapped inside of it okay and that makes sense if you think about it because when we push magnets together right and they're strong we really have to push so when that gets released that's a lot of potential energy that's trapped in there that wants to come out all right now i'm going to take a second and reward those of you that have watched the video the entire way for those of you who've watched the video the entire way, all you need to do is go to Google Classroom and in the private comment section, just type in awesome and then hit turn in. If you do that, I'll give you full credit. You don't have to do anything else on this assignment. So I'll say it again. You go into Google Classroom, type in awesome in a private comment, not a class comment, but a private comment, hit turn in and you'll get full credit for this assignment. You won't have to do anything else. Okay. For the homework, <clears throat> um, what you're going to do now is take the information that you have, and this was the results of uh, Wednesday's test, and you're simply going to answer <clears throat> this question. Let me pull it up over here. Um, in using complete sentences, what do you think could make the magnetic force produced by the launcher system so much stronger in the Wednesday launch than the Tuesday launch? even though the spacecraft was moved the same distance closer. So uh, take the information that we have from the experiment, okay, take that evidence, and give me three or four sentences um, why you think Wednesday's results were what they were. <clears throat> and unless you're doing the alternate assignment that I talked about, then only do the, you only have to do the warm up or the homework. If you're doing the alternate assignment that I talked about, do that. Otherwise, you do the warm up and the homework, and you turn it in, and you're good to go.